This spring, I had the opportunity to watch the progress of a great horned owl nest. I'd like to share that with you. I will present the videos in order, along with the nesting facts of great horned owl. My first video starts about the day of the eggs hatching, but I want to take you back to the courtship starting last winter. Great horned owls mate for life and stay together throughout the year. If one mate dies, the survivor will find a new mate. Females may breed when one year old, males often not until two or three years old. Males start vigorously hooting in November and continue until the eggs are laid in January or February. Females respond later in the courtship period. The voice of the male is lower. Great horned owls have been called the five hooter for their calls. Who, 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 who. Great horned owls do not build their own nests. Instead, they usually use old nests of other birds that build large platform stick nests. Some owls add bark strips or their own breast feathers to the nest. Other birds don't add anything. These owls often use nests of hawks, eagles, ravens, magpies, crows, herons, and others. They claim these old nests in winter before the original builders come back to reclaim and build these nests themselves in spring. Raising an owl family is hard on the nest, so great horned owls usually do not use the same nest each year. They allow the original builder or other bird to rebuild and use the nest the following year. Because the leaves aren't on the trees yet, it is easy to spot owls in early spring using old nests. This is the best time to find them. Great horned owls may also nest in tree hollows, caves in cliffs, ledges on abandoned buildings, and artificial nest platforms, including those made for geese and osprey. This particular nest was built in last year's red-tailed hawk nest. It is high up in a eucalyptus tree at the local golf course. Eggs are laid as early as late January. Whether the birds are nesting in San Diego, New England, New Oregon, or New York. The latest egg date for laying in San Diego was April 13th. My guess for the nest I'm watching is that the eggs were laid in late February. Typically, great horned owls lay two eggs. The clutch size commonly ranges from one to four eggs, rarely up to six. The eggs are white and rough in texture. They are about 2.2 inches long and weigh about 1.8 ounces. They are about the size of a medium grade chicken egg, but more rounded. The female owl begins incubating as soon as the first egg is laid. New eggs are laid every other day. Thus, the first egg laid will be the first to hatch and will be the largest of the chicks in the nest. It takes about 30 days for each egg to hatch. Sometimes the male owl will incubate the eggs, but once the eggs hatch, the female owl usually stays on the nest exclusively. Chicks hatch blind and covered with white downy fuzz. Their eyes open after about 9 to 11 days. Here are the two chicks in this nest, both with eyes open on April 8th. So counting backwards 12 days takes us to March 28th. So that's why I thought my previous video on March 27th was probably the date of hatching of the first egg. In the Oregon breeding bird atlas, young owls were observed on nests from the 15th of March to the 27th of July, but most were seen in May and June. In San Diego, the breeding bird atlas there found that many young owls leave the nest in April.
The chicks start getting their first true feathers about eight days after hatching. They have about half their feathers when they are 14 days old. When the chicks reach about 21 days old, they show the first indication of their ear tufts. These really aren't ears. These horns are decorative feathers on the top of the head. The ear canals of owls are on the side of the head, down low near the eyes. For the first two weeks after hatching, it is normal for the chicks to be aggressive toward each other. They fight and tussle, but rarely harm each other. As they get older, they get along better. While mom stays on the nest, the father hunts for food for the family. He brings back to the nest food for the chicks and for mom. Rabbits are the food great horned owls hunt the most across North America. But when the chicks are small, the male brings smaller prey items such as worms and grasshoppers. These owls hunt mostly at night, but as the chick gets larger and hungrier, the male may hunt during the day too. Even mom may join in the hunting at night as the chicks grow larger. The chicks beg and give loud raspy screeches, night or day. When the chicks are small, the female will tear prey into smaller strips. As the chicks get larger, they often swallow prey whole. Prey items include whatever is most abundant. Rabbits, hares, mice, and voles are popular food items. Skunks are a popular food item too. You may smell this odor near nests. They eat snakes, squirrels, frogs, smaller birds, and even smaller owls. Sometimes they even bring back fish to the nest. Uh-oh, what's happened here? There's only one chick. Sadly, it is not unusual for chicks of all birds to die. If food is scarce, then only the first and largest owl chick may survive. Or one of the chicks could have fallen out of the nest. The owl chicks at about six weeks of age begin what is called branching. The chicks crawl out of the nest and out along the branches. They return to the nest to eat and sleep. This continues for several weeks. When I arrived on May 20th, the nest was empty. Had the owls fledged? Or worse, had the last owlet perhaps died? In one study in Ohio, 25% of nesting attempts failed with no chicks fledging. I searched the branches of the tree and finally found the young owlet. The owlet had successfully fledged. At this age, young owls often make their way to the ground. They can jump and glide from limb to limb but they are not strong enough yet to really fly. Instead, they fly hop up on lower branches of trees and larger shrubs. Their parents care for them there. When they first leave the nest, they are only about 75% of the adult weight. 
Their parents care for them out of the nest for several months. You may find large juveniles begging from their parents into September or even October. After that, though, the parents drive their fully grown young out of the parents' territory. It's not an easy life for the young owl. Only about half of the owls that successfully leave the nest will survive their first year. They will become floaters. These are unmated birds without a territory. They do not hoot in the spring. But if all goes well, in one to three years, this young owl will find a mate and set up their own territory somewhere nearby, often within 15 to 30 miles. Click on this video to learn interesting elf owl facts and photo tips.